out beyond the ideas of wrongdoing and rightdoing, there is a field. I'll meet you there. When the soul lies down in that grass, the world is too full to talk about. Ideas, language, even the phrase each other doesn't make sense. Hi everyone. I'm very happy to introduce Charles to you today. I met Charles in 2014 when I moved to Somerset West. He's quite a reserved person, but I found him very amicable and approachable. He has this naughty schoolboy child which makes you wonder what he is up to. During this episode, we are going to hear what makes Charles tick and how that correlates with his sense of spirit. This podcast is supported by The First Layer, the 12-step workbook on working through the 12 steps in any addiction in 21 sessions. There is also a 24-day step coaching and counseling program available based on The First Layer. For more information in this regard, go to www.freddy.org.za and click through from the notices at the right of the homepage. Sit back and enjoy. Good morning, Charles. How are you doing? I'm very well, thanks. And yourself? I'm awesome. Thank you very much. I'm so happy to have you here. It's been, it took us a while, but yeah. here we are. So how are you? How's life treating you? Yeah, life is uh, challenging. Life on life's terms, as you know. Things happen. <laughs> yes, <I do. laughs> <laughs> Things happen. Uh, we've got challenges. I get challenges. They get thrown across my path. And um, at the moment, I'm I'm feeling good. But um, I won't say that life is not challenging. Yeah. How do you get through challenges? What gets you through challenges? Look, the biggest the biggest help in my life is definitely my spiritual path. Ah, that's what we want to talk about. Cool. Uh, Eat it. <laughs> it's the relationship that I have with the God of my understanding. Everyone's got their own belief structure. And um, for many years through, obviously, I had a, a, a big spiritual awakening a long time ago. And as a result of that, I feel that that spiritual connection that I carry to whatever's out there has definitely got me through, like I said, the life on life's term stuff and given me purpose and meaning as to uh-huh. what to do through and to look at the good in every situation. Okay. So my spirituality gets me through cool. it. Did you grow up with spirituality? It sounds as if you've gone through a difficult time and spirituality kind of got you, you learned about a spiritual solution and you got it and you carried on with that. But how did you grow up with spirituality? Okay, so basically, I'm not going to go too much into detail about the way I grew up, but what I will say is there was a phase in my life as a very young boy that uh, my parents went seriously into the Christian faith, okay, big time, but I didn't really believe in it um, at that stage because of the fact that you know their behavior was different at home compared to there. Okay. So my spirituality, where I found the first connection with something bigger than myself, was. My parents moved away to go and be missionary workers, you know, quite an erratic decision, pack everything up and run. And everyone was standing on this, it was a place called Petra Rock. So it was this missionary camp out in Nelspreit somewhere. So it was up on this beautiful rock and um, they were all praying and singing and stuff like that. And I, I just didn't feel it for myself. How old were you now? I think I was about seven years old. Okay. And I remember not wanting to be in the norm of what everyone else was doing. I wanted to find my own path. So I remember there was a cave where they were all singing and praying and stuff like that. So I walked into the cave and I kept quiet and I stood in this cave in this little confined space and I felt some kind of a connection to something bigger than myself. And when I came out and I explained that, I was kind of met with some kind of um, resistance that it can't just be a feeling from, you know, nowhere. But then I knew that my spiritual walk would be unique okay. from that day forth. However, as my life progressed and I went through a lot of hard trials and, and tribulations, as they say, my spirituality totally dwindled. And I wanted nothing to do with it because of the pain I'd suffered okay. due to being in a certain system. Yeah. And that had changed again later in my life. But that's that's the bottom line of growing up with it. Okay. You have been frowned upon because you didn't have the mainstream belief. Am I correct? That's correct, okay. yes. And then when the shit hit the fan, as you grew older, to yeah. call it that way, as life happens, you even lost that weird connection that yes. that you had. Okay. Yeah, I lost and it. And when, when you kind of had your spiritual awakening, was it? 
into mainstream or was it your own concept or what happened? Okay, look, what happened was, um, I mean, I can share a bit about this. I mean, obviously the listeners will pick up the, you know, obviously I've been in some kind of a, you know, my addiction to drugs and alcohol took me to a very, very low place. Me too. <laughs> okay. So we can relate. <laughs> we can definitely relate. Um, and so you went deeper into that dark cave and, yeah. and, and couldn't see the light at the yeah. end of it. Yeah. And I found my spirituality at the time because of the pain that I was living in. That was my spirituality. It was a negative spirituality, but it made me feel something other than feel dead. Ah. Okay. So on the streets where I ended, some random guy came and spoke to me and told me his story about being a member of a church and having a home and a wife and a good job. And then he started drinking and he lost everything. And I didn't understand at the time what was happening then. But I remember standing up and walking away and feeling something in my spirit connecting to this. And I told, I swore at him and told him to leave me alone. And he said to me, you're going to be dead within six months if you don't stop doing what you're doing. Mm. So I walked on. He touched me on the shoulder and he said to me, you won't understand now. But one day you'll understand and God sent me to come talk to you. And obviously at that moment I didn't believe in that stuff and it yeah. freaked me out. But when I walked into the club after that, my, it's like my eyes had, had opened to something different and I saw all the negativity that I hadn't seen before. Oh wow! So something had happened in that moment and from there on this power started showing me love and miracles started happening in my life where I ended up in treatment when I couldn't afford to go to treatment. Wow. And from there, I started discovering my own path. And later on, I started exploring things from various different religions. Okay. And then eventually I found the God of my understanding in my way. I believe more in spirituality and an open mind and to learn from everything that's out there. But I do find belief in, I won't call it mainstream, I'll call it a personal relationship with a God that I choose for myself. Okay. But I don't look down or judge or force my opinion on anybody else because I believe spirituality is a very sensitive topic and people yeah. get it very wrong. You're a surfer? Correct. I, I hear you often saying that, that you're going to walk around a dam. Yeah. It's true. <laughs> okay. So it sounds as if nature plays quite a, quite a big role for you in... What do you get out of nature? Sure. I'll tell you what I get out of nature. When I go surfing, you see, when I came out of treatment, a guy came to the, the, the secondary care where I was at and he said he's going to teach people to surf. Oh, wow. So I learned how to surf and from then that's just been my recovery oh wow so when i go into the water a lot of people say i'm i'm talking nonsense but i will actually say a little prayer for protection obviously because we all know there's sharks in the water and <laughs> especially in these waters <laughs> <you> say, <laughs> <laughs> and surfboards are dangerous you know i've broken my nose i've broken many bones surfing are you serious? yeah from surfing big waves but uh, oh, wow. i've been told not to anymore and you listen no <laughs> I, didn't, I can't I listen. Would. <laughs> I won't listen. I like the rush. <laughs> but um, I really find a spiritual connection out in the water. I really do. I feel connected to the ocean. The salt water cleanses my spirit. Often when I'm at an internet cafe or whatever, I, I do a lot of work at an internet cafe at Somerset Mall. There's a guy that also surfs and he will walk in there and he'll look at it, me immediately and he'll say, you need a cleansing, bro. Ooh. You'll just see my face looks all wound up and I, and I look stressed out. And then you'll ask me when last we were in the water. Oh, wow. And then when I go surfing and I go to the cafe and he sees me in there, he says, you've been in the water. So okay, he can yeah. definitely see how good it is for me. I love walking and sitting by rivers and dams, mountains. I feel a very big connection to the universe, uh, stars, the moon. Um, I love that kind of stuff. Okay. So my spirit comes alive when I don't focus on materialistic things, but when I focus on creation, if I could call it that, or whatever you want to call it. For some people, it's something else. But for me, it's this beautiful thing that I can't say I made. It's interesting what you're saying. I had an epiphany this morning. There's something that's happening in my life that is important to me, and the answer should come in about... On the 25th. Okay. I, I should know whether this <laughs> yeah. is happening or not. And obviously, like all of us do, you know, you go through an exciting phase and say, if this happens, then. Yeah. And then I also think, but if it doesn't happen, 
Yeah. And this morning, the thought went through my head is when, when did you ever really want something that didn't happen? Mm. And I couldn't think of one thing that was not materialistic. Sure. <laughs> no, for sure. It, and, for sure. And I realized that, oh my God, is that really what my life was about? Mm. Was it all about stuff? Yeah. And I, I, I still can't think of anything kind of more non-tangible. That, that, yeah. that I really wanted. It was always mm. about stuff. Yes. So this is interesting. And unfortunately, what I realized was this thing is about stuff. Yeah. <laughs> no, that's true. So, so, so I'm moving back into that. Yeah. But it's interesting what you're saying. I've got a, a sponsee who serves as well. And okay. he says to me, he finds his higher power behind the waves. Sure. That's when cool. He, when he's on his surfboard. And I, I get such a clear picture of it. Yeah. I get the feeling that I've never surfed. I'm afraid of the sea. I'm not a good swimmer. Okay. Um, the picture I have is when you're on your surfboard behind the waves. Mm. Quiet. For I, sure. I get this, this yeah. sense of extreme calm. Yes. But with that anticipation, kind of when's that, when's that, that, that wave going to yes. go? So I, can, I connect so well with that picture of sure. his higher power is there. For sure. And is that the sense that, that, that you get as well? Or do you yes. get it in the rush? I can kind of think you get it in the rush. <laughs> You know where I get it actually is when I take off on a wave, okay, and I flow down the line. Yeah. Right? My style of surfing is very, I like a smooth style of surfing. When I started surfing, I watched a couple of guys in the local surf community that I saw and I thought was really good surfers. Okay. And they had very smooth style. Now, I surf very smooth and it's all about grace and, and, and you know, flowing nicely. But then comes the radical maneuvers, you know, like the aerials and stuff that they do on TV and stuff okay. like that. And so, you do that shit? Yeah, 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 I do oh all God. that stuff. So I basically, I surf mellow and then there's an explosion of a radical move, you know. Okay. So I feel my higher power for me is not just this smooth sailing, let's be gentle all the time. I feel that there's an excitement, there's a, there's a, there's a strong power behind that and when I'm flowing and I'm feeling okay my spirit is in tune with everything now next thing I just go and I like blow up you know just this massive thing and it's like smack that poor wave I give it attitude (laughs) and then then, before I know it I get a hold down for like 10 seconds under the water (laughs) just to get humbled by mother nature but you know, I must just tell you this funny. Down boy, down boy. <laughs> yeah, just tell you this funny story. I was surfing the one day in the Strand, and there's a lot of seals that 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 come around. And often, sometimes, what's quite scary is a seal will come and pop up around you the whole time when yeah. there's a shark near. Oh so he will come close for safety. Yes. Um, oh, shit, yeah. And I'm surfing the one day, and I'm all alone uh, in the water, and the sun's busy going down. So I'm a little bit creeped out, but it was a beautiful summer's night was last december and i'm lying there and next thing this baby seal pops out in front of me and i get such a fright but the seal gets such a fright as well we both basically shriek okay, obviously the seal can't make a noise but his eyes went massive and we both got such a fright and we i jumped off my board and he like fell backwards and i just thought that was so cute eh? this little baby seal i shame and i just laughed eh? so so there's so many like fun experiences that happen as well as yeah. the scary ones, you know. I saw a YouTube video of a guy rowing. Yes. And the seal popped up on the, top, on the front of his canoe <laughs> and the seal just sat there. No, Did you hear funny. the joke about the baby shark and his father are swimming in the sea? No. And the baby shark says to his dad, Dad, why do we always circle around the surface before we bite? Them? And his father said, because they taste better with a clean cola. <laughs> I get the feeling uh, no. you and the baby seal had a clean cone on yeah, for sure. <laughs> after that episode. I don't know why, but I get the feeling, have you done inner child stuff in your journey? Absolutely, yes. It sounds as if you're quite in touch with your inner child. Yes. As if you can do the play thing. Yes. Oh, fantastic. I because what I got from the surfing was kind of, it's the rational, the adult Mm. starting and then the child comes and says, let's play. And yes. you say, yes, let's yeah, play. For sure. That's amazing. Yeah. I, I can't do play. I really, really struggle to play and I don't know how to find it. Mm. I take life far too fucking serious. And I feel sad if I say it. I for really sure, feel yeah. sad if I say it. Yeah. You also do something that's adrenaline-based for a hobby. 
Yes, that's right. <laughs> so you are an, adre- an adrenaline junkie. Absolutely. Do you do bungee jumping and shit? No, I'm not bungee jumping, um, not skydiving. I, I, I'm not into that. When I was younger, I had no fear of heights. Okay. But I fell off a ladder because I, I work in construction. Yeah. And I fell off a ladder and it was quite high. Luckily, I didn't get hurt that badly. It was just a couple of bruises and a cut here or there. But after that, you know, I kind of got this little bit of fear. So since a young age, I've been into extreme sports, you know, skateboarding, BMXing, rollerblading, all that stuff. But like competitively, you okay. know, so I, I did really well. Oh, wow. Um, and I always pushed the limits. No I can't fear. tell you how many concussions I've had in my <laughs> life. And I'll probably <laughs> take some strain at a later stage. But people think surfing is mellow. I've had the worst concussion in my life surfing, actually. You know, I was almost hospitalized because of surfing a wave and uh, making a stupid mistake. But the other hobby I do is obviously motor racing. Yeah. You guys, know, well, you know about yeah. it. I do really well in it. You know, okay. I grew up with, with, with racing mm-hmm. because of my father. And um, my dream was always to, to race. But unfortunately, there weren't the funds yeah. for me to race. Because that's an expensive hobby. Oh, it's extremely expensive. Yeah. So growing up as this young adrenaline junkie sitting on the side of the track, my heart would hurt, you know, because all I want to do is do it. Yeah. And I felt this is where I belong. And eventually, when I could... I built my first car. Oh, wow. It took me a year to build it. It was a little mini, but it was an awesome was little a mini. <laughs> and um, I started like that, and I did really well for myself. And from there, the rest is history, you know. Oh, wow. But I will say one thing. I like to push the limits. So sometimes that can be a bit too dangerous, all right? I've been told before by a lot of my close friends that they don't want me to race, because where someone will sl- tap off going into a corner, I'll push it that much further. However, I'm a very professional driver, although I've never made a career out of it. I'm very, it's almost like time and everything slows down for me. When I okay. put the helmet on and I get into the seat and I strap myself in with the seat belt, everything slows down. It's like I get into my office. Okay. You know, for some yeah. people, they go and work. That f- feels to me like an office. And I can really, really concentrate and focus under severe adrenaline moments yeah. it's the same with the surfing and i think that's why my surfing and all the other sports that i do have actually have actually excelled it sounds as if the what other people would, will see as as a dangerous space for you as if that is also a place where you meet your higher power yes yes so by by coming coming to the edge you you feel in touch is that yeah i'll tell you it, it just uh i stopped racing about eight years ago okay um i left the sport because it was attached to something and which i eventually healed from and about this year beginning of this year i decided to get back into the sport okay because i just yeah. want to say because for a while i knew you weren't racing yeah I kind of took a break because it's expensive, but, you know, it's like even surfing. The equipment is becoming crazy expensive. Yeah. Obviously, racing is much more expensive, but I got back into it, okay? And I just kept having a lot of bad luck with the car. Oh, no. All right? The whole Did time. you built this one as well? That no, 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 no. It was a sponsored car, which I was intentionally going to buy. Okay. So I was testing it. And it's funny, the first race I did with a car, I prayed before I went to race. And everything went pretty much smooth, okay? I didn't push the limits. I kept calm. My, my pit mac, my friend, was there to keep me mellow. He's also spiritual. Okay. So we said, we're not doing this for us. We're doing this to... My slogan on the back of my race car always said, by God's grace, I race. Ah. Okay, so I've always seen it as a gift okay. from my yeah. from my HP. Um, so I was going to race the one night, and my grandfather, who was quite a big part in the reason why I am where I am today, recovery wise, was 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 busy dying the mm-hmm. night that I went to race. Yeah. Okay, and just before the final, my sister came to me and said, "Grandpa I just passed away." Oh God! All right. So I'm sitting in the car, about to go out, and I'm like, I'm going to win this for Grandpa now, you know? But I wasn't thinking clearly. So all of a sudden, the car wouldn't start. 
Oh, okay. Oh, my word. So, okay. The, so the car didn't start. Yeah. And I couldn't go out. And I believe that was God stopping me from going out because I wasn't going to think straight. Being and I'm responsible. Yeah. Exactly. And I would have pushed too hard. Yeah. But then the next race, right? In the final, all right? Against all the top guys that race in this kind of class, I was sitting in the car and I said to my friend, you know what? I've been doing this completely wrong. I've been trying to make it about me. So I'm going to surrender this. And I said, I let go and I let God. And that race, nothing broke. And I won the race. And I got the checkered flag at the end. And then from there, I, I felt, okay, that's it. Yeah. So yes, I do get spirituality even in that moment. But I first need to surrender it. I hear what you're in, saying. In if everything I, I do. If I think of my... I used to be a South African junior athlete. Sure. And... Um, but I didn't enjoy it at all because I was too anxious because yeah. I attached so much value for on sure. the win. Yes, yes, yes. That it was, I did it for everything and everybody. Yeah. I did it for the acknowledgement that I felt I needed. Yes. The topic that we discussed earlier, my, my, my being gay, I knew already yes. there was something wrong. Yeah. And the only way that I could get acceptance was to, I believed, was to win every single fucking race. Yes. I so the you. amount of anxiety I put myself yeah. through before the race, because if I lose this, I'm unacceptable and all those type of things. For sure. I so wish that I could be in the space where I am today. Yes. When I was 17. Because mm. I would have surrendered. I would have said, you know what? This mm. is a talent that I was given. Yes. To in joy for sure fuck i would have done it differently yeah <laughs> true so so you're so lucky I'm, 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 i get goosebumps listening to you sure. because it's so exciting to think that you yeah. can you can use the, the lessons you've learned yeah. in your hobby and and really yeah. excel in it that's yeah. really excellent so talk to me a little bit about i want to go back to you walk, you walking around the dam okay is this dam here in somerset west yeah okay cool and is it a routine or is it your safe space that you go to? Look, um, for me, at least twice a week, I like to go somewhere like to the dam or to a Radloff Park Okay. at about nine o'clock at night when the stars are out and just look at the stars. Don't say anything. Don't do anything. Just feel, get into the moment and enjoy it. The dam, why the dam is so special to me is many years ago, I went through a divorce, all right? And, Same. And, and when I went through the divorce, I, I, I took a massive knock yeah. um, for me. And I'd moved away up to the West Coast, small little farming village, worked in a treatment facility there, and basically got my healing there. Okay. But there I met a guy, an amazing, an amazing guy, who really invested a lot of time and energy into me. I mean, he was a South African champion at freshwater fishing. Oh, wow, okay. So there was an awesome river there and a dam. So he taught me everything he knows. So it was quite funny because eventually I was catching more fish than him. <laughs> and I could see the resentment in his face. You know, he would catch one little fish in the eye, pull it Beginners, four. beginners, yeah. life, beginners <laughs> life. Oh, it was so funny, eh? So that was priceless. But if, what actually happened was... He smoked a lot and he developed lung cancer. Oh, no. But it was too far by the time that they discovered it. And he started going backwards. And this was going to be the first time I'd had a loss in my life with someone close to me. So I ran. I ran. I oh, left okay. the job and I came back to Somerset West. Okay? okay. I still feel bad that I did that today because he saw me as a son figure because he didn't have a son. Yeah. All right. I, we spoke on the phone. He was very fond of me and I was very fond of him. But he died, and I never, I never went back there. Okay. Okay. But when I went to this dam, I've been fishing at that dam since I was small. I've never caught one fish there, and it's so frustrating. <laughs> I see everyone else catching fish there, but I don't catch anything. I don't even see a fish there. And they were going to have his memorial service on the Saturday. They were going to go for a nice hike in the mountain. And I was contemplating, do I go, don't I go, do I go, don't I go? Yeah. And it was so emotionally intense for me because I'd, I'd never experienced this. Yeah. So I went for a walk around the dam. And as I was walking around the dam, true story this, all these fish started circling around the edge of the dam. Like, I'm talking about hundreds of fish, probably all the fish that were in there. <laughs> it was the spiritual experience that a lot of people might laugh about. Yeah. But nature's 
constantly giving me these kind of things. That's why I'm spending so much time in nature yeah. because I'm so open to seeing this stuff because my spiritual eyes are open. A lot of people don't notice the, the beauty of what's going on around them because they're too focused on, Absolutely. you know, like you said, the material things or everyday yeah. stuff. I focus on a different level. I, I, I like to focus more on the spiritual level. So when these fish were coming around, I started crying because it was such a beautiful experience because I'd never seen fish there yeah. and it was the day before. So I phoned his wife and I said, listen, yeah. And she said, Charles, it's just him letting you know that it's okay. He's there where you are now. You don't have to drive up just to be there. Oh, wow. And it was such an amazing yeah. experience. So that's why I like going to that dam. Oh, okay. So I have all these special places that I link to something amazing that's happened in my life. So the obvious question, mm. have you caught a fish in the dam now? No. <laughs> <laughs> and I don't want to go and try again. I've had it. At least you now know this fish. I know this fish, but I don't even try anymore. Okay. It's so embarrassing. Oh, that's awesome. I think the last time I tried there, I was teaching some guy to cast his line into the water. And I was like, no, man, this is the way you do it. And before I knew, my fishing line was caught in the tree. <laughs> and it was so embarrassing. So I just like said, no, that's enough now. <laughs> It sounds as if you, you're you quite comfortable with your own company. Mm, very true. So you're an introvert. You find your, your energy from, from within. Absolutely, yeah. Um, sorry, I, I, I struggle with big social in places. I get very anxious. I know myself. I know exactly what I like. I know exactly what I don't like. And I know exactly the type of people that I can sort of click with. For me, like I say, because of the fact that I'm spiritual, just like every human being is, yeah. because I work on mine so much, I have a, a friendship with this power that's greater than myself that I take with me wherever mm. I go. So it's not like I go and meet in a, in a building or something like that. Yeah. This, this being or power goes with me whatever I do. Oh, yeah. So that's why I enjoy my own company because I feel loved the okay. whole time. Oh, lovely. Mm. Another thing popped into my head. Hmm. You DJ. Yes. Do you still? Yeah. I've actually just put a, a picture on as my screensaver of me DJing. Okay. However, I don't play in... Um, I've been asked to play in clubs, but I decided not to. So it's more... It was a hobby. Okay. And it's something that I, I was into in the wrong... Back in the day, in the wrong days. And then it's something that I got back into at a later stage in my life, you know. And I love it because it's so creative, okay. The music that I play, a lot, a lot of people like it, you know, dance music. Okay. So it's it's house. So anything with a beat because I, I joined a church when I was a teenager just because I had to go to a holiday club. And there they asked me to play the drums. So I started playing the drums and I love a beat, Anything okay. with a beat. But they also talk about um, house music or anything with a beat. It's like the womb, like being in the womb. You know, they've linked it to that. Okay. So it's like that constant bass line that's, that's beating the whole time is like a heartbeat. Yeah. So a lot of people that feel, you know, it's, it's either a negative thing or a positive thing. So for me, the expression of DJing, blending two songs together, is just a, a, an amazing feeling. And the music that I have is some of it is really, really um, uplifting stuff. So when I go and I DJ, a friend of mine, we used to do it in his warehouse or I used to do it at my house. But when we go to the warehouse, we've got these big speakers and we put the lights on and we just go for it because I don't really want to get involved in the, in the, in the club scene. So this is truly a hobby. This is just yeah. to, for, to entertain yourself. Yeah, like I said, I've been asked to play mm. at these reunion parties yeah. for, the, for the scene that I was in. I was big time into the rave scene. Okay, I'm sure you were as well. And um, the good old days when times were bad. <laughs> yeah, the, the, I don't know. Yeah, I, I had a lot of fun to be so honest with you. Fuck. I'll be honest. I had such a jaw. Um, I actually went to a, a reunion party uh, a month ago. Okay. And uh, back in those days, I think I was like 18, 16, 18, or 19, and 20. And I had so much energy and I could dance. Hey? Now I went onto the dance floor at 37 <laughs> and I tried to pull out the moves that I used to. 
and I couldn't even walk properly when I walked out of there. Normally, I'd go for a whole evening. But I hey, did like one hour, and I was wet from the sweat. And I was like, no, 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 bro. Now you no, know. You didn't have the chemical. Yeah, sometimes. exactly. <laughs> but um, yeah, no, I just love uh, the music that I play. A lot of people would say, stay away from it. It doesn't lead me back into the wrong mm. things. The reason why I said no to playing in clubs is because of the type of people that are involved in it yeah. and the amount of drugs that get consumed while yeah. the DJs are actually playing. And I'm not saying I would, but it's very irritating if you're standing there and someone brings something and offers yeah. it while you're in this mode. Yeah. So, um, yeah, um, lastly about this, the music is quite euphoric that I play. Mm. And I just love the way it just takes me to this peaceful, relaxing feeling. I love all kinds of music, but my specific genre is just like, I don't know, it has a calming mm. sensation. I listened to a, I don't know where, it was on a general radio station and suddenly they played this kind of rave song. Sure. Type of thing. Yeah. And it's amazing how my neuro pathways know what to do. Yeah, I, yeah, yeah. I immediately <laughs> went into this... Space. Oh, yes, like, like, uh, <laughs> there we go. And I thought, oh God. And when I was two years clean, yeah. I went to an MCQP party. Okay. I was very, very nervous, but I made the normal precautions as an addict, you know, yeah. check in with somebody before the time and after time, make yes. sure you're home at a certain time, go with people that are safe. Yeah. And I had so much fun because my neuro pathways knew what to do. I didn't yeah. need the chemicals. Exactly. To, to, to go into that space. Exactly. And I had such a good time. For it's sure. not something I'll do regularly, but yeah. I proved to myself that, that I, I really don't need the chemicals to no. do it anymore. No, not at all. And that is also for me, it's quite a... That time was quite a spiritual space because I stood on a dance floor alone, dancing between a lot of people that was drug fucked. Yes. And I found the ability to, to not judge them mm. because I know I was there and yes. to realize that... Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I told you he's going to do to, to um, that I could find the hello the fun without the chemicals <laughs> <Kitty. laughs> as you all know Tyson has entered the room <laughs> Charles so as of today mm. what do you do to to entertain yourselves spiritually if I can put it that way if that's no there's a question I've been wanting to ask the whole time okay um if you say you built the car, did you do the the the, 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 the engine and stuff? Or yes. The, or the, oh wow! So where did you learn that skill? Well, obviously from my father, uh, growing up in the garage, okay, um, having to hand tools and <laughs> being the spanner boy. No, no, eighteen. Yeah, not the sixteen. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I tell you, it's so frustrating. But uh, I learned a lot. Eh? My dad's super clever. I feel very like blessed to have such a like a motor boffin and he taught me from a young age how to build motorbike engines oh. and stuff and then when i built the first car the mini that i built i built the engine i built the car oh. it took me a year to build it but i did it piece for piece as i oh. had the money but when it was done it was a proper little racing machine wow. and i've always had this creativity where pe some people have creativity to paint yeah i have creativity to put a car together okay so i learned that but then i also the mini that i built my father wasn't really that involved in it because um, at that stage we were sort of not really communicating properly but i built it from a workshop manual oh wow so I built the whole motor looking at photos. Yeah. Uh, the motor didn't last very long. It lasted <laughs> one race because I put some parts in wrong. <laughs> but uh, I learned an expensive <laughs> lesson there. But it but went so for we one did, race, yeah. you know. Exactly. So that's how it came to be. Yeah. As a student at some stage, I had a 1967 Mini. You know that one? Yes, 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 yes. Yeah, still yeah, had, yeah. A, had a yeah, proper yeah, boot. Yeah. And I was driving home from class one day and um, I was on an uphill. <clears> and as I pulled the handbrake up. I pulled the whole handbrake out of the body. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what a weird sensation. Oh my God. Oh my God. <laughs> we called it Bruno and she's still alive. Or he's still alive. Sure. And my niece now owns it. Oh, uh, cool, man. My, my sister then had it redone for her for her 21st birthday. Yeah. So Bruno is, is, is still alive in, in racing sure. form at the moment. Oh, yeah. awesome. What do you do to live your spirituality today? I think I've touched on a lot of bases, like things I do. Surfing, nature. But you know, I, 
I'm reading a book at the moment, okay, and a lot of people here might believe this and might not believe this, but my belief is, this is my opinion, is that there's... And you're completely entitled to it. Yes, so thank you. It. Thank you. My opinion is that there's more to life after this, okay? Yep. Um, so the way I live my life is I live my life that this life that I've got on earth, I mean, I can go surfing this afternoon and that could be the end of me, okay? Or... You know, everyone's like, oh, your sports are so dangerous. But I mean, just just quickly, something funny. My friend races motocross, right? So we go to the track. Not one guy gets hurt and they're flying through the air and doing all kinds of crazy things. A cyclist on a road bike comes in there and he says, can you please phone my wife? I dislocated my shoulder. <laughs> now, I ask you with tears in my eyes, how does that guy fall on a tar road going down a straight line and yeah. dislocate his shoulder? <laughs> Where the other guys are doing extreme sports and not one guy gets hurt. Yeah. So you see what I'm saying. I so, so I think um, because, because I live and I see that sometimes I get tied up like in, in the cars. Okay? Um, when I start seeing that I get too tied up to something materialistic, I try and let it go. Okay. Which is very difficult for me. But then I realize that, you know, what is the bigger picture for Charles? Yeah. Now my bigger picture is that what I believe is that there's an afterlife, all right, for myself. Some people believe they're coming back, a lot of different beliefs. Yeah. But for me, I believe whether, whether there is coming back or whether there isn't, I choose to believe that there is got to be more. Okay. So I believe that if I live my life on a daily basis to the best of Charles's ability and not do the things that used to take me away from God's will for my life, which yeah. was the addictive behaviors, okay. all right, and the divorce stuff and the other traumas that I've dealt with, I've got two ways to deal with it. Give up or face it and go go straight through it. So those are basic spiritual principles for me. So as you know, honesty, open-mindedness, yeah. willingness, and the courage to change. For me, the courage to change is not always just, okay, I need to go to the next level of being a human. For me, courage to change means that I need to let go of something, all right, to be able to grow into the next phase. Yeah. So the book that I'm reading at the moment, a spiritual book, is talking all about what am I putting too much focus on at the moment? Ah. You see. And, you know, I'm not a spiritual guru. What I've learned is through my mistakes. And I have found basic path, a simple little way of living for Charles. And if I live in what my talents are and if I live in what makes me feel connected yeah. and makes me feel alive, then I have enough to get through each day. Nice. So I do go to a place of worship. Yeah. I love to sing. Okay. I don't believe in everything I hear, mm -hmm. but I love to sing. Awesome. So sometimes I go to the dam or I go to the, and I sing. Yeah. People walk past, they look at me, is this guy nuts? Yes, I am nuts, <laughs> but in a good way. Am my special type of crazy? Yeah. <laughs> I think I'm special. <laughs> you are. In my own funny way. <laughs> oh, cool. All I right, cool. I as well. I always think that I grew up in Afrikaans in Gekerk. Ooh, okay. And that, Interesting. Singing, that singing was so not. Oh, no, no, no. I used to laugh. I always wonder if I grew up in kind of an an American gospel church with, with those big voices. Yeah. I've been singing where, yeah. my, where my spirituality would have taken. For sure, yeah. But Charles, I loved what I heard. Thank you okay. so much for awesome. our chat. I just really appreciate it. And I know you're going to surfing this afternoon, so enjoy That's that. That's true. <laughs> May the best wave catch you. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Thank you very much for Look after uh, yourself. your time. Thanks. Thanks. I loved this chat with Charles. He is such a multifaceted person with an amazing spiritual connection which seems to connect him to so many other areas of life. I feel as if we made a true connection during this conversation, and I really look forward to many more like these in the future. If you want to know more about what I do, please feel free to connect with me on my website, which is www.freddy.org.za, or find me on Facebook at www.facebook.com forward slash freddy.org.za forward slash or on Twitter at at Rensburg Freddy. Remember that Freddy is always spelt with an IE at the end. I want to thank Charles for his time and for sharing his views with Meet Me in the Field. Thanks for listening. Be safe. Bye.